What's more exciting than a new mini PC? A new mini PC with a new CPU that I haven't reviewed. Probably a bit more exciting for me than you. But don't go away, because today we're checking out the GMK Tech Knockbox K3 Pro with its Intel i7 12650H CPU, a 10 core processor with UHD graphics. But before that, did you know the Zima board A32 is the world's first hackable x86 single board server? It's equipped with an Intel Celeron N3550 quad-core CPU, SATA 3, dual gigabit LAN, and even a PCI Express 2.0 X4 slot. Use it as a personal NAS, 4K streaming server, VPN router, and IoT gateway. The Zima board A32 is pre-installed with a simple-to-use CASA OS to get you started. Find out more with the link in the video description. What's interesting about the GMK Tech Knockbox K3 Pro Mini PC is that it's one of the few to use 24GB of soldered LPDDR5 memory. As of this video, 12 and 24GB SODIMM RAM configurations haven't entered the market yet, and 24 should be plenty for most users. The 1TB NVMe storage configuration currently comes in at $470 US, and the bare bones at $400. For that one, you'll need to supply the NVMe SSD drive and operating system. In the box is a replaceable top lid, monitor mount, HDMI, manual, and power supply. Something that gets my blood rushing downstairs is when a mini PC is made out of metal. And the GMK Tech Knockbox K3 Pro is, well, mostly made out of metal. The top and bottom lid are plastic. The exterior design is identical to the AMD Ryzen based Knockbox K2. Again, the top is easy enough to pull off to get to the NVMe drive, which is a Lexa Gen 3 SSD. Note that the M.2 socket is listed as supporting Gen 4. There's no 2.5 inch drive expansion support for additional storage, and the Wi-Fi module is soldered onto the board. The front features an audio jack, USB 4, and dual 5 gigabit USB 3. The back has a barrel jack connector, dual HDMI 2.0, dual USB 2, and gigabit LAN. More USB ports are always welcome, but 5 is pretty common. Ubuntu booted from a USB stick without any issues if you want to use Linux. Otherwise, this mini comes with Windows 11 Pro, if you get the 1TB pre-build. Intel's i7-12650H is a powerful CPU with different power limits. This one is running at 45W base. In single core Cinebench, it's near the top of the stack with a similar score to the i5-12500H mini I've reviewed. When it comes to snappy OS performance, Intel CPUs have the edge. But in multi-core, it's AMD chips that have the lead. At default settings, the 12650H here is behind the others. That's around 11% behind the ASUS PN64's 12500H. But if we turn on game mode in the BIOS and let the fan run high, performance can be pushed further as cooling improves. There was a 16% improvement and it slightly edged out the 12th gen i5 minis. In video encoding at default, the Knockbox K3 dropped to near the bottom of the stack. But with gaming mode enabled, there was a 14% improvement which helped it nab 5th place. Gaming mode didn't change the graphics scores, and the integrated graphics of this one falls in line with the 12500H in DX11, but in DX12, there was a 6% drop. So the integrated graphics aren't the fastest in this roundup, but will hold up fine for plenty of tasks. It also looks like the extra bandwidth from DDR5 memory doesn't do anything for the iGPU in 12th gen units. One benefit of Intel CPUs is QuickSync, a hardware decoder on the CPU for H.264 files. This really helps with video editing if you're using that codec. I found the Mini to be pretty responsive when scrubbing across the timeline in my 4K project at half resolution. I could definitely edit my videos on it if I needed to. However, it's not powerful enough to handle the latest game title releases, even at the lowest settings. An image upscaling technique like FSR 2 still isn't enough to make the new Ratchet & Clank game what I consider playable. But for esports, League of Legends runs at a super high frame rate. Noxus will and something like Valorant outperforms the Ryzen 5800H slightly.
The Ryzen Minis have the edge in Forza Ryzen 5. The K3 Pro manages to outdo the 5800H slightly in Elden Ring. For Cyberpunk, the 5800H has a 15% advantage. and an even bigger advantage in God of War. The K3 Pro does really well in the Breath of the Wild emulation test, pretty much matching the AMD K2 variant. PS3 emulation had different results depending on the game. In Wipeout, the K3 Pro is close to the 5800H, but in Skate 3, it's far behind. While in Motorstorm, it butts heads with the K2. So very mixed emulation performance results depending on whether the CPU or the GPU is stressed. If you do need much more on the graphics side of things, the USB 4 port supports a Thunderbolt eGPU with 40 gigabits per second bandwidth. Here I'm playing Forza Horizon at 4K with an RTX 3070 graphics card. When it comes to temps, the CPU maxed out at 93C both at default settings and game mode. Thermal throttling was recorded. The fan noise jumps up a lot to compensate for the extra boost performance during game mode, and I found it to be a bit too loud. So I'm not surprised the balance mode is the default BIOS setting. The GMK Tech Nightbox K3 Pro has no NVMe cooling, so it temps are high like the K2, but the Lexa drive didn't thermal throttle during my tests at all, so that's nice. Sequential read speed is maxed out for a Gen 3 drive, and write speeds are fast, but not the fastest around. Idle power draw is on the high end at 12 watts, but it's not too far off the others. However, this mini PC didn't draw anywhere near as much max power as the 12th Gen Nux or the ASUS PN64, which explains the lower multi-core CPU scores against those units. Game mode added an additional 4 watts to the max power draw. Alright, so let's look at the pros and cons. The GMK Tech K3 Pro comes with a metal case, although it would be nice if at least the bottom was as well. The K3 Pro has a USB 4 port, so you can use an eGPU or other Thunderbolt device on this mini, no problem. 24GB of DDR5 memory by default is great to see, but that memory and Wi-Fi chip are soldered on, so no changes can be made. There's also no further storage expansion, whether that's another M.2 slot or 2.5 inch drive. Also, the M.2 drive runs hot with no dedicated cooling. The GMK Tech Nightbox K3 Pro is a pretty good Intel CPU mini PC option with USB 4. It's especially nice for video editing. Graphics performance trails the K2 a lot, so that might be the better option if you want a game, and you can find the review for that one right here. Cheers!